Adult degenerative scoliosis can present with a lot of different symptoms. Some patients, it's only back pain. Uh, when it gets more severe, it can lead to a true deformity, meaning like the patient is having a hard time standing upright and you can see them, they're either coming way forward or they're coming over to the side. The most common manifestation of adult degenerative scoliosis tends to be from nerve symptoms. So what happens is as the spine degenerates and as arthritis accumulates, this can cause pressure on the nerve roots. The pressure on the nerve roots can be from asymmetric disc degeneration, it can be from bone spurs, or most commonly, it happens as a result of something called ligamentum flavum, which is this connective tissue covering between the bone and the nerve roots. That tends to get hypertrophied, or what it does is it overgrows when degeneration in the spine happens. And this overgrowth tends to cause pressure on the nerves. So really the most common thing that I'll see in a patient with degenerative scoliosis is leg pains from the nerves getting compressed. A lot of times people call this sciatica, meaning just a pain coming down the leg. The official term is radiculopathy, which means that it's a nerve root getting compressed. The other way that nerve compression can manifest is something called neurogenic claudication. What this means is this means that all the nerve roots in the spine are getting compressed, or the lumbar spine, I should say. And this tends to manifest as numbness, tingling, pain, and like crampiness, usually in the buttocks and the back of the legs. So the most common thing that patients will tell me when they have this symptom is that they will walk a certain amount of time and then they start to get cramping in the back of their legs. It then gets better when they sit down and then they can stand up and do it again. These patients also tend to have a hard time standing still, like in an upright position for more than 10 or 15 minutes. They say that their symptoms get a lot worse when they do things like extend, for example, when they go to put something up on a top shelf, and then they feel they get a lot better when they lean forward. They will tell me a lot of times they feel like they need to stretch it out. You know, what, what is surgery for adult degenerative scoliosis? That's a, you know, that's a hard question to, to ask, and that might be a question. Seems like it has a simple answer, but it really doesn't. Surgery for adult degenerative scoliosis can take the form of many different things, and it really depends on the symptoms. So, for example, if a patient with adult degenerative scoliosis only has leg pain, a lot of times the surgical solution is to just do a surgery to decompress the nerve roots. So that can mean something called a laminectomy or a decompression, or sometimes you need a fusion to decompress the nerve roots. But the goal of surgery in that case is to decompress the nerve roots. On the other hand, if a patient is having what I would call structural problems or postural problems, meaning that the scoliosis is so bad that it's causing them to be unable to stand upright, that person a lot of times is gonna need like a spinal reconstruction. What that means is that we have to do a deformity type surgery or a surgery where we realign the spine in order to balance the person. This is a lot of times a much bigger deal than a surgery just to decompress the nerve roots. I would say though that the most common thing is that we have to balance both. So in a patient with adult degenerative scoliosis, and this is why I have a love-hate relationship with the condition. I love it because it, uh, it, it, it's very academically interesting and it, you know, it means that we have to consider all types of things, but it can be very frustrating because sometimes you're balancing the need to decompress the nerve roots with the pre-existing deformity. So this right here is a very good example of how decision-making in adult degenerative scoliosis can get complicated. So this is a patient who has a degenerative scoliosis. We can see how her spine is, is curved like this. We can see how the vertebrae or the bones in the spine look like uneven. You know, like this one is a little bit off to the side compared to that one. Um, this one is sort of rotated out of place. And then looking at them from the side as well, we can see like there's just, there's no discs here, right? It looks like, it kind of looks like a mess. And that's a lot of times how these look. Now. This patient, you might say, this patient probably, you know, this looks like it hurts. Well, the only problem that this patient had was leg pain. They didn't have any back pain. So for me to do a surgery on this patient where I reconstruct her whole spine, that could be a little bit of overkill. So instead, what we did was we went to target where the leg pain was coming from. And so when we looked at their MRI, we could see that the nerve compression, these are the nerves coming down right here, 
was really happening in one place. It was happening right here at this segment. And so when we did surgery, we only took focused on this segment right here. Now, she may develop back pain in the future. She may develop a problem with standing upright in the future. But right now, we felt like we could address that one segment in a way that would help her most pressing symptoms.